All right, you guys, so today we're going to be looking at lesson 8.5 and 8.6. So we're basically going to wrap the last two sections into one lesson. And so what we're looking at today, if you remember, we've looked at scale factors for linear measurements. And then last time we looked at scale factors for two dimensional objects. And so today we're moving on. We're expanding a little bit more on that and looking at three dimensional shapes. So some of the key ideas that we want to think about for today's lesson is this word similar and we've kind of looked at it before but I just want to remind you guys that if you have two three-dimensional shapes that we can say are similar it means that their side lengths are proportional so what that means is that if um, you've say for example with this one here if you've expanded you have an original and then you've made a, a diagram or a or a duplicate that is bigger in this case, it means that all of the sides have been expanded by the same amount, right? So you're using the same scale factor to expand each side. If one of the sides was expanded by a different amount, then it would not be a similar object, okay? Um, another thing to keep in mind is that the scale factor is the ratio of the linear measurements. So, um, basically the lengths of the sides or like the height of a cone for example and <clears throat> both of the measurements in scale factor are expressed using the same units okay so um, if you're comparing you need to make sure that for example that your original and your diagram are in all centimeters for example um, lastly to create a scale model or diagram you need to determine an appropriate scale to use based on the dimensions of the original object and the size of the model or diagram that is required. Okay, so always thinking about what basically would be practically useful. So let's go through some examples. For each of the following, you want to determine whether the two objects are similar and then justify your decision. <coughs> so in this first case, we see that we have two cubes sitting side by side. The first one is two centimeters for all the sides, right? Because it's a cube. And the second one is three centimeters on all sides. So we want to decide whether the two objects are similar well, if all the sides of the cubes expanded, so if all sides here were two and now they're all three, that basically means we've increased the size by a scale factor of one and a half. And so all of those are the same size uh, and related to the sides of the original object by the same amount. And so we can say that, yes, this um, ob these objects are similar. So yes, the objects are similar. And it asks us to justify your decision. So we would say that they are similar because, um, oops, all sides are changed by the same scale factor. Changed by the same scale factor. Scale factor. And so you could always double check and make sure that this is the case by doing um, like diagram divided by original. So for example, three divided by two is equal to a scale factor of one and a half. And of course, all of these two centimeters have been multiplied by one and a half to make three on all sides. So we know that it's similar. What about for these cones? So we have um, a cone here that has a height of 60 and a radius of 25. Um, we're not given units in this particular one. And then this cone has a height of 36 and a radius of 15. So these ones might be a little bit trickier to figure out because it's not the same measurements. So we just want to basically compare the scale factors. Now keep in mind that when we calculate scale factor, it's always going to be diagram divided by original. Okay, and so we can basically do that for both um, 
measurements, just make sure you're always comparing the like measurements. So we would want to do, let's say that this enlarged version is the diagram. So we have a height of 60, and then we want to divide it by the equivalent dimension on the original, which would have been the height of the original cone, which was 36. And if we do 60 divided by 36, um, or sorry, 60 over 36 should be equal to, um, same thing for the diagram for the uh, radius here, should be 25 divided by 15. Okay, so essentially what that means is these should be changing by the same amount. <clears throat> Basically, what I did for mine is I just kind of thought about how this would reduce. So, but let me just double check actually with my calculator because it should still be the same. Yeah, so actually, even if you just do your diagram divided by your original um, for the height or for the radius, then you end up with 1.66, which is the decimal, so 1.6 repeating. Personally, what I prefer to do. Um, and just remember, if they ever ask you for the exact value, it means you can't give a decimal. So if you're in a test situation and they ask you for the exact value, what you need to do is give the um, fraction. Now, of course, if you see 1.6 repeating, you might know that it's 1 and 2 thirds. But the other way you can do that is to think about reducing one of your fractions to lowest terms. So for example, um, a 5 would go into 25 five times and into 15 three times. So if we reduce that to lowest terms, oops, sorry, into 3, not 13. So if we reduce that to lowest terms, we would have 5 thirds or 1 and 2 thirds. Okay, so if you're asked to give an exact value, you could say 1 and 2 thirds is the scale factor. Um, <clears throat> so now we just need to answer the question, are the two objects similar? Well, because 60 divided by 36 gives you 1.6, and we can always put this into 25 divided by 15. You can see that it ends up being the same. And so we can say that, uh, yes, the objects are similar. Um, because the scale factors are similar. Or sorry, the scale factors are the same. Scale factors are the same, not similar, because similar would just, <laughs> it's not, it has to be exactly the same because the scale factors are the same. Okay. <coughs> Now, if we would have found that, um, like for example, if this one would have been 60 and this one 36, but all of a sudden, if this radius was 25 and this radius was 25, then we would know that <clears throat> they were not similar cones because there would be no change in the radius, but there would be a change in the height. So that would show us that one of the proportions was changing and the other one wasn't. Or if you divided um, or let's say that this head measurement had been 10, right? So then we would have had still 60 over 36 would have been a scale factor of 1.6, but 25 divided by 10 would have given us two and a half as a scale factor for the radius. So if those scale factors were different, then you would say that the objects are not similar. Okay, so for this set, they are similar, but if you would have found that when you divided the equivalent kind of measurements on the two different ones together and they came up with different numbers, then you would say that the objects are not similar because they do not have the same scale factor. Okay, <clears throat> so just make sure you're familiar with that term similar and know how to use it and how to determine if something is similar. All right, so this next one is kind of like what we did last time with the 2D objects. <clears throat> So I'm just going to go through the examples here really quickly first again before we go up to these key ideas. So in this kind of investigation, we're going to imagine that we have a square. Actually, so I guess more accurately, we should have called that a cube. So let's imagine that this is a cube. Um, 
and so it's like a square rec square rectangular prism I don't know if they would ever call it that um, but yeah it's a 3d object and we're given a bunch of different side lengths and the first thing we're asked to calculate is the volume of these different cubes so remember that volume for a cube is going to be equal to length times width times height and so essentially what that means is if all sides are the same measurement in this case three centimeters then the volume is going to be equal to 3 times 3 times 3, which is 3 cubed, and that gives us 27 centimeters cubed as our volume. Okay, same thing for this one. Our volume is going to be equal to 4 cubed, which is going to be equal to 64 centimeters cubed. Uh, 9, our volume is going to be 9 cubed, which is going to be equal to uh, 729 centimeters cubed and 10 centimeters is going to be 10 cubed which would be equal to a thousand centimeters cubed <clears throat> okay so now let's imagine that we have these original squares and we're going to be changing them by a scale factor of um, their side length so in the first two they're going to be doubled and in the last two they're going to be reduced so we want to think about what the new side length would be well, if we have a scale factor of 2, remember that basically you take the scale factor, multiply it by the original to find the new side length. So we're going to have 3 centimeters times by 2. So the new side length is going to be 6 centimeters. Okay. Same thing for all of these. 4 cm times by 2 is going to give us 8 cm. Uh, 9 centimeters times by 2 is going to give us 18 cm and 10 centimeters times by 2 is going to give us 20 centimeters. Okay, so those are our different side lengths. <clears throat> now, the main thing we're kind of actually focusing on here is what is going to be our new volume. So remember that our new volume is going to be our all of our side lengths multiplied together, so basically our side lengths cubed. So in this case, the new volume is 6 cubed. So volume equals 6 cubed, and 6 cubed is equal to 216 centimeters cubed. Now, it might be kind of hard to tell with this, um, but basically what we're doing when we have 216 centimeters is we have... Um, our original volume, if we think about this, how can we relate our original volume to this new volume? Because that's what we're basically trying to do. So if we do 216 divided by 27, then you end up with 8, right? So if we think about our original volume, it went into 216 8 times. Now, if we think about how can we relate this to our scale factor, how does 8 relate to 2? Well, 2 to the power of 3, so if we cube 2, we end up with 8. <clears throat> and so this is quite a bit more of a complicated relationship than what we saw last time, where it was pretty easy to see them. Um, you might not necessarily think of all these connections right away, but basically what we find when we go through all of these is that if we cube our scale factor and multiply it by our original volume, we find our new volume. Okay, so like for this one, for example, our scale factor is 2, so 2 cubed again is going to be equal to 2 cubed is going to be equal to 8, and if we multiply that by our original volume of 64, we end up with so 2 cubed is 8 times by 64 gives us 512 centimeters cubed. Now, let's see if that would match up, because we know that we could also calculate the new volume just by um, cubing the new side length. So 8 to the power of 3 also gives us 512. So the pattern is, is staying constant. Now let's try it with a reduction. So in this case, our volume is going to be equal to one third cubed. So basically, remember that we would do 3 to the power of 3. So now we have 1 27th on the bottom, essentially. 
and we want to multiply it by the original. So 729 times by 1 27th gives us a volume of 27. Okay. Now, hold on a second here. 27, and then, oh, shoot, I did three times as much for this side length. I was going to say it doesn't make sense for that to be, um, or no, I didn't do three times, sorry. I just carried through with the factor, the same scale factor. So let's just fix those up. You might have already noticed that. I was wondering why that didn't make sense. Okay, let's check out what these new side lengths would be. So nine centimeters times by a third. Well, a third of nine is going to be three centimeters. And 10 centimeters times by half is going to be five centimeters. OK, that makes more sense. Because now we can see that with three centimeters here, we said that 729, our original volume, times by the scale factor cubed was equal to 27. So basically, 1 third cubed times by 729, which gave us 27 centimeters cubed. OK, and if we do 3 cubed, of course, we also get 27. So again, we see that it matches up there. OK, last one here really quickly. We have 5 centimeters, so we're going to expect our volume to be 5 cubed which would be 125. Now with our scale factor here, remember what we would be doing is a half to the power of 3 times by our original, which was 1,000. <clears throat> and so a half cubed, remember 2 cubed was 8. We already went over that. So essentially what we have is 1 8 times by 1,000 which gives us 125, which we just predicted is what we should get as our new volume. So hopefully now you understand what the relationship is between your scale factor and a change in volume for a three-dimensional shape. But just to summarize, we have it listed up here. If you have two three-dimensional objects that are similar and their dimensions are related by a certain scale factor, which we can represent with k, then the volume of the similar object, like the, the new volume, is going to be equal to the original Oh, I, sh I uh, made a mistake there. This shouldn't be area. This should be volume. So the original volume multiplied by k cubed is going to be our new volume, which is what we just did. Now, we're not going to go through a similar thing with area, but basically the same idea holds true for area. So essentially, if you know the surface area of an original shape, then you would multiply it by the scale factor squared to get the surface area for your um, similar object. Okay. Now, we kind of looked at that last time in terms of a two-dimensional shape. Three-dimensional shapes really aren't that different. It's just that they have a bunch of different areas that you need to add together. Okay. All right, so let's look at some examples where we work with this. <clears throat> if the length of a rectangular prism is 3 centimeters and the width is 2 centimeters, what happens to the surface area and volume when the prism, it, prism is enlarged by a scale factor of 3? So first of all, let's think about how do we calculate the original surface area? Well, we have um, this is kind of our shape, and so it's a really good idea with shapes, which you would have done in the past in your math learning. It's a good idea to be able to think about um, basically how you would break down a three-dimensional object, like a rectangular prism, into a bunch of two-dimensional objects that you can add their surface areas together for. So we're given, like, this is the length, this is the width, and this is the height. So essentially what we want to do is for any rectangular prism, we know we're going to have two of the same of each, right? Because there's like a top and a bottom, two sides, and then the front and the back. So with the surface area, we can say that we're going to have, let's start with this first one. So this box here, represents um, length times by width, and there's two of them. So it's going to be 2 times by length times by width. OK. 
Okay. Now we're going to have to add the surface area of these other squares. So this square has length L and its side is height instead of W. And we can see that there's going to be two of those, right? The bottom and the top of the square. So we're going to have two length times by height. And then the last thing that we're going to have here is these two um, edges here, like the sides. And there's going to be two of them times by. They have, uh, let's see here, height and width is going to be right because they correspond with this side here. So it's going to be height times by width is going to be those dimensions. So this is our original surface area formula. Now, if we're going to enlarge it by a scale factor of three, basically all we would do according to what we talked about up here is we would say the surface area of the similar object is going to be the original area times by the scale factor squared. So we would say surface area is equal to two length times width plus two length times height plus two height times width. <clears throat> and then we're going to multiply that by um, let's just call it k squared is our scale factor. Okay. Now the value for k that we said was um, 3. So it's going to be surface area equals 2 length width plus 2 length height plus 2 height width times by 3 squared. And so we can say <coughs> that our new surface area new surface area will be 9 times larger, right? Because we have the original measurement here, and we're multiplying it by 3 squared, which is 9. So we know that the new surface area will be 9 times larger, OK? We can do the same kind of an idea with volume. So we know that volume is length times width times height for a rectangular prism. <clears throat> and the new volume is going to be length times width times height. And we're going to multiply it by the scale factor, which is k cubed in this case, because it's volume, right? We have three things being multiplied together instead of two things. And so then we can say volume is equal to length times width times height. Um, <clears throat> Our k was 3, so 3 cubed, which is going to be 27 length times width times height. So this is our original measurement, and we're multiplying it by 27. So we can say the new volume will be 27 times larger. Okay. And that's all there is to that. So let's try doing some practice problems where we <clears throat> work with word problems. So in this case, we would say the NBA uses a basketball with a diameter of 25 centimeters. The WNBA uses a basketball with a diameter of 22 centimeters. Are these balls similar? And explain. So the first thing you want to do is think about what, do, what makes something similar? Well, we know that it's when the sides are all expanded by the same factor. So with a sphere, you need to think to yourself, is there different sides that can be expanded by a different amount? Well, no, right? The sphere is just one round circle, basically. Um, and so if it's expanded or contracted, like expanded or reduced, I guess would be the better word, um, Either way, it's going to be consistent. And so you can say that, um, yes, they are similar because they are the exact same shape. So even though they have a different diameter, the shape has not changed. They are the exact same shape. So that's kind of a nice, easy thing to know with spheres. 
The next part tells us to determine the scale factor that relates the NBA ball to the WNBA ball and then vice versa. So essentially all that this is showing us is the difference between how you set up the original and the diagram. So in the first one for part A, they're asking us to have a scale factor that relates NBA to WNBA. So that means that NBA is being considered to be our original and WNBA is our um, scale factor or our diagram. The thing that we will apply the scale factor to, I guess is the better way of saying that. So if we want to determine the scale factor for that, remember that it's going to be always be diagram divided by original. So our WNBA, maybe write down my measurements here, WNBA was 22 centimeters and original was 25 centimeters. So our scale factor is going to be 22 centimeters divided by 25 centimeters, which is going to give us a scale factor of 0 0.88. And all that's telling us is that if you took the original, multiplied it by this value, you would have the dimensions for the diagram. And you should always just stop and think if that makes sense. So if we're multiplying by a factor, scale factor less than one, remember that always means a reduction, right? Because a one to one would be the exact same size. So less than one means less than the original size. And so that makes sense that we have 0 0.88 for that value. Now, if we do it the other way around, in this case, we're gonna do the WNBA ball is the original. because we're looking for the scale factor to go to the NBA ball. So NBA is the diagram. And so we're gonna follow the same rule. Basically scale factor is equal to diagram over original. So <clears throat> the NBA ball, which was 25, and the original was 22. So 25 centimeters divided by 22 centimeters which gives us, um, let's see, 1.136 repeating. So basically, let's just round it to 1.14. And again, that makes sense, right? That we would have to go a little bit over 1 to get from something that's 22 to 25. Okay. All right, let's have a look at this question here. Um, the smaller tank in the photograph has a capacity of 1,400 meters squared, and the larger tank has a capacity of 4,725 meters squared. Um, during the refining process, both tanks are filled with oil from a pumping station at the same rate. How many times longer will it take to fill the larger tank than the smaller? So when they're asking you how many times longer it will take, that's kind of asking you, um, like, essentially how much larger is it? Um, because the, the time should be proportional, right? Assuming that you're filling with the same flow rate for each one. Um, so let's just have a look here. Fill in our variables. We have the volume of the small tank is, uh, for, let's see, 1,400 meters squared. And the velocity, or sorry, the uh, volume of the large tank is 4,725 uh, meters squared. And let's see, I think that's all we have. So essentially what we want to do is figure out the scale factor so we can determine the, the how many times different the larger one is. <coughs> so in order to figure out scale factor, remember we need to have diagram divided by original. And because we're trying to figure out how many times larger the large tank is, we're going to assume that that one is our diagram. So we're going to have 4,725 meters squared divided by 1400 meters squared. And that's going to give us 3.375 times larger. 
So assuming that everything else stays the same, we would say it will take 3.375 times as long to fill the large tank. Okay, um, let's have a look here. How many times greater is the radius of the large tank than the smaller? And so with this one, we would just need to think about, so this was actually part A, part B. Um, remember that with the radius, it's going to be, um, let me just think about that a second here, because with this, we were comparing the volumes. And so if you're comparing the volumes, remember that that basically means your scale factor has been cubed for that. So what we can say is scale factor cubed is going to be equal to 3.375, the value that we just calculated. So with a radius, because it's a linear measurement, we can't use that cubed value. So if we want to figure out what the actual scale factor is, then we need to cube root the scale factor, which means we also need to cube root this, the other side of the equation there. So we're going to do cube root of the scale factor cubed, which is going to cancel out that cubed. And then that means we also need to cube root 3.375. Okay, and when we do that, we should end up with the scale factor being equal to um, 1.5. So then we can say the radius is um, 1.5 times larger. Okay. Um, now you have a question that you can try on your own here. I've written down the answer for you, but basically this is going to be the same kind of an idea as what we just did. So I'm going to let you guys try that on your own. And then the only other thing I want you guys to do is to go through, if you can, I mean, I'm terrible at <laughs> sketching shapes, so I kind of tried to do my best here, but try and sketch yourself these shapes so that you're familiar with the names of each one. Um, kind of the most important ones that you will really have to be familiar with that are used most commonly are the rectangular prism, uh, the right cylinder is pretty common, the right pyramid, and the sphere. Those are going to be your most common ones that you'll see. But the reason why I want you to do this is so that you are very familiar with um, what like length, width, and height refer to in each of these or what the different components of the uh, of the formula are referring to. Like for example, here with this triangular prism, we have sides A, B, and C. So in a test, I will actually give you guys this formula, but you have to know what each one of those is referring to. So it is important for you to kind of know this, um, this chart and be familiar with how these formulas relate to the actual shape and where those different measurements are. Okay. So on the test, I will give you these formulas, but you just need to know how to apply them. All right, so you guys have an assignment on page 500, and um, that's everything for this chapter. So when you're finished with this, you can start working on review and get ready to write a test. And um, as you guys are probably familiar, I know this is your first unit, but whenever you're ready to write, Proctorio is ready anytime, so you can just write the test whenever you're ready uh, you don't have to email me and schedule or anything like that. All right, so I will see you when we start doing notes on Unit 2.